Welcome back to round one of the modern mocks preliminary walkthrough. We're on the play, which is always good. And let's see what we have here. We have the mana for Neoform. We have the Alasaurus Rider, the worst half, because we might have to, uh, if we fizzle, we may have to stop and pay for the pact or just die on the spot. We have the Nourish and Show package, which is fine. Uh, it helps not fizzle on your combo turn with the pact. And we have a redraw and a potential counterplay against the counterspell decks. My philosophy here is that um, this deck mulligans pretty well from 7 and even from 6 as well. So the whole point of the deck is to um, combo by turn 1 or turn 2. And if I don't have a clear way to do that um, by, by set the second turn, like I probably would mulligan aggressively. So I probably would mulligan here. Um, just FYI here, I mulligan around 50% in around 50% of my matches, so I do mulligan pretty aggressively here. So I do mulligan. Here we have the evolution and the uh, Alistair's Rider, but no mana, unfortunately. I don't believe we can keep this. Alright. That's awkward. So we have everything we need, right? So we have the Neoform. Alasaurus Rider, the prerequisite green cards. We even have the Chancellors, but we don't have the Metamorphos to try and turn one, unfortunately. There's no way to convert these green mana into anything productive on turn one. See, this is the type of hand if we had on like uh, Once Upon a Time, it would have helped um, greatly um, ex expand our keep range. Like if this if this was uh, once upon a time, for example, we would have snap kept, I think, because all you needed to do was hit once upon a time for a blue land. So blue land, I, I believe there's twelve sources. This we would get five looks for once upon a time from once upon a time. So you can think of this as a seventy three percent chance to turn one if this was a once upon a time. So this kind of illustrates how good once upon a time has been uh, for me. As it is. These are basically blank cardboard, card, uh, cardboard, and we don't even have startup mana, so this is very close, but I think we have to mulligan this. Ah, so here I thought that um, have keeping a five, keeping a five card rolled up hand that just needs lands or a once upon a time is good enough. Uh, logic being that the resor uh, the deck is a very resource needy deck uh ne resource needy combo deck so <clears throat> let's do some rough math here so we basically need two lands out of our 13 and let's give ourselves like three draw steps to get two 14 percent it's not great but just mulliganing four when you're a card when you're when you are a six card combo so that's two lands three uh two lands two green cards alistair strider and a neoform so you need six specific cards, right? And Morgan into four is kind of a tough proposition. So I do understand where it's coming from. I wouldn't be um, I wouldn't be surprised if Morgan into four is better, but I think this is defensible here. And I might keep the Simming Spirit Guide to keep make the make Metamorphos an out. I think I will do that because all you need is an Alasaurus Rider, two green cards, and Neo Form. And I, this probably is superfluous. Yeah, this is what I did. I don't show it so to as to conceal my um my deck and I uh, if you're playing online I would uh, urge you to hover your mouse on the OK button right away so you don't give anything away. So here we just pass. Opponents probably thinking like what the hell's going on. Let's just follow. Like, the shadows target themselves. Okay, so. Not a great start to the day for me because Greg's Shadows is one of the worst matchups, I believe. So they clearly wanted to um, draw the draw the card that they kept on top. Your City of Brass, great. <clears throat> so even though we had a rough um, rough Mulligan to five, we're just one land or one mana morphos away from. That's totally fine. So one thing, uh, one new addition to the Grixis Shadow deck that I believe has been pretty good is Drowning Lock, so you might want to be mindful of the cards that you put in your graveyard. It's the Gurmag Angler. OK, 
anything. That's pretty good. Gourmet? Perfect. So, we have the 4 mana Morphos as an out, and 12 lands as an out. We're not playing Wild Canter in this list, so those are the outs. Can we get lucky? Never unlucky, I'm a Neo Farm player, what can I say? So let's do the thing here. Oh, one note, um, there was a pretty self-deprecating and funny tweet that I made where um, I actually clicked on the City of Brass, putting the trigger on the stack, and before I can Neo Farm in a situation like this, my opponent bolted it. So in real life, you, all you need to do is announce the casting of Neo Farm, and then um, announce how you're paying for it. So that way, if you announce the spell first, the spell will be on the stack first, meaning that this will be sacrificed first. So this cannot be like um, hit by removal. Or on Magical Online, all you need to do is click Neoform first, rather than tap first and then Neoform. Which is what I did here, as you can see. So I got lucky here, but the game's not over, even though I think Grixis Shadows is, will be pretty hard-pressed to um, beat an 8-8 lifelinker on turn 2. A consideration is actually just not drawing more than 7 cards because um, in game 1, the only out that they have is e either a TBR kill or TBR through a Grizzle Brand or a Drowning Lock with more than 7 cards. So that's something interesting to think about. But I think drawing the first 7 is pretty free. So we, we have the Grizzle Brand, so we can't recombo anymore, but we have the two mana sources, which is good. And we have Nourish and Shoal. So given that um, Nourish and Shoal at least gives me a uh, high likelihood of recomboing, uh, regaining life and redrawing cards, I think it's free to just um, draw seven more here. Generally speaking, um, I I would if, some, if a decision is close, I would try to err on the side of just trying to finish a turn on this, on the spot. Alright, so we have the Summoner's Pact, we have three Nourishing Shows, which is great. So, I think at this time, it's go time here, it, it might be mathematically impossible for me to lo uh, lose here, unless I brick on all green creatures and Summoner's Pact, so what I would do is I would try to get the Worm here, and uh, we go off to the races. <laughs> Keep in mind that on this uh, in this list, I don't have a Wild Cantor, so the only way to filter um, the free mana <coughs> here into blue for a Laboratory Maniac is through a Metamorphos. So you don't want your library size to be exactly X divided by 7, because if your library is exactly empty, you can't make blue mana without drawing your, drawing your card before Laboratory Maniac. Given that we're, thir we're at 38, which is 3 above 35, we can afford to pack to at least once, if not more. All right, get the worm here. We'll show for 15. Let's keep going. Got nothing much here. We got the free draw, which is fine. Yeah, this, this, this game is over here because there's another um, access to the worm. I, I believe everything else is academic. Draw some more. Draw some more. Manamorphos for a Laboratory Maniac, or the blue for the Laboratory Maniac. Here I believe uh, my opponent commended me on my exceptional play, but by that I mean he or she called me very lucky for uh, mulling to a mulling into five with no land, with no land. So that's pretty amusing. Thank you for your compliment. <clears throat> so that's game one. So let's go to game two here. So my sideboarding philosophy for these discard heavy decks have changed a bit. Um, the real breakthrough I, uh, I had was like cutting Chancellor of the Tango on the draw because against Jund or um, Grixis Shadows, comboing on the draw on turn one is very unlikely. So Chancellors do uh, otherwise do nothing. So those really help make up a lot of room post board. So sideboarding for Grixis Shadow is very tough because they come from 
three different angles, right? They come from a very fast shadow or a, a Gurmag angler draw. They come from the permission uh, angle with the disdainful stroke as well as stubborn denial. And they come from discard. So what I like to do is on the draw, Veil Summer is not as good. So I prefer Leyline. And on the play, I can um, take out some Ley Lines for Veil Summer so I can hold up the uh, Veil Summer on turn one or time walk them. So as you can see, I actually take out Veil Summers here, even though they are theoretically pretty good in this uh, matchup. I also remove a Grizzlebrand because, uh, for when the matchup is very tough post-board, like against Blue-White or against the Shadows, such that I need every edge I can get, and I'll take the 2% chance of drawing the Grizzlebrand and losing the spot, because I need every spot. Uh, I need every card, and two, three transports have been taken out. And as you can see, the Pact of Negations have come in because I'm going to draw and I don't have time to set up a Veil of Summer uh, turn um, by drawing more than two lands or three lands. All right, so this is a, this has, this has a Rider, this has an Evolution spell. This is two, um, two uh, lands and a Simian Spirit Guide. So this is actually a turn... Um, turn to kill so let's see if our opponent keeps they do it's really hard to mulligan something like this or perfect hand with like leyline and pact negation and whatnot but i think like this is this is just this just has to be a keep like maybe they're on like a stubborn denial only hand and uh we can really like wait them out and try to build up the, our mana base so yeah, I'm, we're probably going to get discarded, but we cannot mulligan this hand. Yep, yep. That's fine. So they should take the oh, evolution, obviously, because it's the only evolution spell. At least now we get to hold up the Veil Summer. This is a nice pickup because this is exactly what it's there for. <clears throat> so we can uh, tutor for a Neoform or a Guttural Response. <clears throat> Let's just play our land and press. It's interesting. I wonder what the blue uh, tap was for. Hmm. It's awkward here. We could tap. We could uh, put our shields down and glittering wish for a neoform, but that can go wrong in so many ways. <clears throat> we can see me a spirit guide, metamorphose into green white, and do the, get the neoform while leaving the veil summer up. Which I don't think is the worst idea here. We can also veil. Uh, we can also glittering do the same glittering wish line for a gutter gutter response. This is a pretty slow hand here. Like they could have played a shadow by fetching, right? So they don't have shadow. They, I suppose they could have a Gurmag and a thought scour. That's why they tapped and untapped for the blue. They didn't want to put their shield down. So that, I, I think that's actually somewhat likely. And otherwise. This seems to be a more reactive hand, even though it could also be that they have more discards and they don't want to play into the Veil, so that's fine as well. I think a uh, reasonable line is actually Simian Spirit Guide, tap the Sanctum Metamorphose into a green-white for a Glittering Wish, probably take, get the Neoform, and then try to pick up a Pact of Negation later. Because I think waiting only favors them, to be honest. They have too many good cards against us. And I decide to not do anything here, I believe, which is fine. Like we, <clears throat> we do get to keep up the Veil Summer. There's no pressure against us. So as we thought, they did have a Thought Scour. It's an interesting sequence. Okay. Gromag, I believe no. Now I'm really suspicious what their hand is. Like no shadow, no Gurmag. It has just has to be like a combination of like disdainful stroke, um, drowning lock, uh, stubborn denial, and snapcaster. That's my read. If that's the case, then it's really possible that you know we want to draw another land and we want to start like glittering wish for gutter gutter response. Uh, Moto, don't do this to me. Uh, all right. What are we doing here? Yeah, so we're, now we're doing the line that we suggested earlier, which is interesting. 
I feel like if we we're going to do it, if we were intent on doing this, even though we got another turn's uh, information, we should have done it a, a turn earlier. Then again, um, getting, getting the fact that he doesn't, he or she doesn't have a creature is valuable as well. All right. Okay, it's this drumming lock. Okay, fair enough. Like that's one of our reads, right? So that's good. That we got that out of hand at least. Okay. I mean, we should be in okay spot as long as um they don't really draw a threat. But we gotta be mindful of Snapcaster Drowning Lock now. It counters all of our business spells now that we have three cards in the um in a library uh, in the graveyard. Okay, another mana is not bad. I feel like, given that we we need the two green cards, we're not we're also not sure like if we are needing a gutter response or a neoform. I think like waiting has merit here. Alright, as I say that, we're gonna do this. I believe I'm going to get neoform here. Yeah. Well, keeping the Veil Summer up, which is great, and we have backup for the Stubborn Denial with the Simeon Spirit Guy. This is such a weird target, I guess. I mean, the opponent knows that we have a Neoform here. I don't understand why they, they're doing that. I would have even taken Manamorphos to make comboing harder, but they do them. It's possible they have a Spell Snare, I guess. All right. Now we veil. More lands, which is not great. I didn't think of this like until um, later, but I could have just played out the Allosaurus Rider here, threaten lethal if I draw a land, because they clearly don't have threat. Maybe I should have done that. Like the other option is to cast Leyland Sanctity, which does have merit, I think. Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. But maybe I should have just cast Allosaurus Raider as a five-five and try to follow up with a land or even a Smear Spirit Guide and try to like lethal them. Like it's clear that there's some sort of like permission in their hand, right? So I think I made a mistake here. It might potentially cost me. Oh, okay, I, I I do do it. Okay, good. Maybe I could have done this before, though. I have to check the film again. But the turn before, where they before they surge gold and like inquisitioned us, I think that was the turn to um, play out the Alistair Strider. And then this happens. It's like, oh, I wonder where this is going. So our read was uh, some sort of uh, some number of Snapcaster. But Snapcaster wouldn't have killed the Drowning Lock. Um, Snapcaster would not have killed the Allosaurus Rider with the Drowning Lock. But this combination is really unlucky here. And honestly, even though like it didn't work out, I still think playing out the Allosaurus Rider is actually correct here. If our read is like they have a bunch of like stubborn denials and Snapcasters, so I'm not too unhappy about it. I think this clearly was not sandbagged, and they just drew it. Obviously, the plan looks abysmal now that, um, with the way it played out, but I still think the playing out the Alistair Strider and trying to go for the lethal is the right move. So, this is one of the case of play good and uh, get punished, I guess. And now I think, like, I'm pretty, pretty dead in the water here. Yeah. Nothing I can do. So, that was an interesting and an unconventional decision point, but, and I think I made the right call, but. I got punished. So let's go to game three. All right, we're here for game three of round one against Grixis Shadows. All right, so this hand looks pretty good to me. Uh, notably, I took out the Leyland Sanctities for Veil Summers because Veil Summer is very good at uh, good against turn one discard. And what else do we have here? Yeah, I, I took out one Pact as well, just because Veil Summer sometimes can be a protection spell. So note the uh, play draw difference here. I think it's very important. That's very nuanced, but important. So this is a turn to kill with Veil or a Nourish Shoal. We have the Veil Summer for turn one, so so it's pretty good to me. 
Yeah, just hold it up. Shadows don't play uh, force negation, so this hand seems pretty well set up, and we should be a pretty good favorite here. I hope they discard turn one. Wow. Yep. Yep. All right. So uh, off to the races, I believe. I think I think I'm gonna cast the Manamorphos first, and I think it's a mistake because we only have one Grizzlebrand in the uh, deck right now, and we're such a huge favor if we can resolve uh, Grizzlebrand that I don't like doing this. So it's the benefit of uh, hindsight and reviewing your play because even though like I thought pl I played pretty well in the mocks, I clearly made some mistakes still. So thankfully, I didn't get punished, and I believe we're gonna be summoners packing. For our, our source rider and off the races. Alright, so we're six above uh, number divisible by seven. That's good to keep in mind. So we have a show here, we have mana, we have more than one show, we have some summoners packed, which is good. We have some um, pack negation against a surgical and a show. So I believe we should just start um, shrinking our uh, library size because I think we're just going to win this turn. We have the we have the mana and we have probably have enough life to work with. So I think I'm going to be firing off the summoners back liberally here. Let's get the worm. Yep, let's draw 14 laboratory maniacs here, which is good. I'm probably gonna fire off the pact. I think everything else is pretty academic from this point because we have the Norse and Shoals. Yeah, we have at least one more. And we have the Manamorphos that we can go through and get through the deck. But my opponent has some really kind things to say about uh, me after the fact. I was a Luxac, etc., etc. But here we are against the bad matchup. We won round one of the Mox Preliminary Modern. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the round two video. Bye-bye.